Yo, what's good, YouTube? It's Gary with another fan TV. Back at you another video. Like the content of this video, go ahead and smash that like button. Like the content of this channel, go ahead and hit subscribe, man. Ravens training camp daily. Uh, today's going to be the last uh, training camp that's open to the public. The Ravens are going to travel to Arizona to get ready for their preseason game versus the Cardinals. Uh, they're not having a joint practice with the Cardinals or anything like that. They're going to be practicing against themselves how they usually do, just in Arizona. That's the only difference, okay? Uh, when they come back, training camp is not going to be open to the public, like I said earlier. What basically what's going to happen is the reporters are going to be able to see like the first 30 or so minutes of practice, and then it's going to be closed off after that. Now, uh, for today, for the last training camp report, we're going to get into that right now. Okay. Now, the normal guys that were injured are still out. You know, you got your James Prochet, your Tylen Wallace, your Tyler, uh, Tylen Wallace, excuse me, your Tyler Linderbaum. You know, those guys are still out. Okay. Um, now, somebody that was kind of new, uh, Daniel Falele got hurt yesterday, and he was out of practice today. Could be just precautionary. They said he might have had some knee swelling. So, we'll see what goes on with that. Uh, Jalen Armour Davis also left practice today as well. So, we'll see if his injury is anything serious or they were just keeping him up for precautionary reasons. Um, Marcus Peters did not practice today, but I think that's part of Ravens training camp um, rehab program. It's just to take it light with the guys that are coming back from the pup list. So, I wouldn't be too worried about Marcus Peters until they tell us it's something to be worried about, okay? Now, not, that's over with. Let's get into the offense-defense portion of what happened at training camp today. Now, on offense, they said it was a difficult time for the offense, man. They did. Miscommunications, a few drops here and there. Uh, they said Lamar has, hasn't been great over this last couple of days. Not as sharp as he was when he was starting the camp into that middle portion. The, the end of the portion hasn't been completely great. So hopefully he can clean that up. But it's not just on him. Obviously, miscommunication drops is things that we just cannot have. All right. They said that most of the offense they flowed through Mark Andrews for better or for worse. We know that's how it's going to go. Um, now, the Ravens obviously need more guys to step up. You know, I, I really think a guy like James Prochet is really missed out here. I know the Ravens fans, we, they aren't super high on James Prochet as a collective. But to me, when I saw him get a chance to play, say, say versus the Broncos and the Bengals, he showed that he could do things out there on the field. So I think they are missing him right now. Uh, Devin Duvernay is fine, things like that. I had no issue with that. But uh, other guys outside of Mark Andrews had to step up. Like, you know, it's, so it's not just the wide receivers. It, I really didn't hear anything about Isaiah Likely today. Okay, so everybody has to play their part, play their role. Um, now, the biggest highlight of the offense actually came from, I think, the second team. Uh, Bailey Gaither caught like a 70-yard touchdown pass. He got past Geno Stone. Said, they said Geno Stone almost got his hand on the ball. But couldn't uh, couldn't exactly get it, so Bailey Gaither scored that touchdown. Um, so that was pretty much the highlight of the day for the offense. So it wasn't even a first team highlight, you know what I'm saying? So um, now uh, the defense, the player who shined the most on the defense today was the player who was paid the most money. Okay, uh, well this this offseason that that is at least um, Marcus Williams. All right, um, big time safety. We know five years, seventy million dollars, everything that comes with that. Apparently he had his his best training camp practice. He brought down two interceptions today, one versus Lamar Jackson, one versus Anthony Brown. Uh, the one versus Lamar Jackson in, in 11 on 11 drills. Uh, apparently, Lamar tried to force it into double coverage versus Mark Andrews. Marcus Williams was there, picked it off, made a great play. Then in 7 on 7s, picking off Anthony Brown. Apparently, he made like a toe tap kind of grab. And that's beautiful. That's elite ball skills from your safety right there. So that's, that, that's beautiful. I'm glad to hear about that. The Ravens paid them a lot of money, and they expect him to be ready to go immediately. I think that the Ravens, not I think, I know, the Ravens have been missing a ball hawking kind of safety since, honestly, Earl Thomas left, and we saw how that ended with Earl Thomas. And then the last couple years, we've been playing with two strong safeties. All right? Now we got a guy back there who's really uh, going to go after the football. So I'm, I'm glad to hear that about Marcus Williams, okay? Um, also, the physicality went up today. All right. They said Marcus Williams had some big hits out there. They said that uh, uh, Marlon Humphrey tossed down Benjamin Victor after a reception. You know what I mean? So it was some physicality, some things going on today that was like, okay, whoa. You know, the defense came to play and got real physical with the offense. So, you know, I, when this training camp in the past come on, that, that's, that's what could happen. The Ravens are going to have a tough physical team. My biggest thing with the Ravens is they got to be able to tackle. So if they can get the tackling right, I have no problem with them. I have no issue with that. They're going to not going to be physical enough. You know what I'm saying? So physicality is not going to be the issue. It's going to be technique, wrapping up, getting the guys to the ground. I mean, this Ravens team isn't soft. So it's more about just the technique of actually tackling guys properly and getting them to the ground. All right. 
Because as we saw in that preseason game, you know, there was some missed tackles out there. Okay. Um, now, the biggest thing that I liked about the Marcus Williams report is that I'm just going to jump back to him real quick was that they said that he seemed like he's a player that's growing in confidence. And that's what the Ravens need from him. They need him to be that leader back there, that guy that knows what he's doing out there on the field. So if he's growing in confidence, that's only going to help the defense. All right. Um, let's see. So they said also in 707s, Kyle Hamilton had a near interception, couldn't break it down. So Kyle Hamilton being around the football, that's what, that's what we want to hear. Um, he's a guy that we expect a lot from. And I don't want to be, I don't want Ravens to be too unrealistic for him. He still is a rookie and the Ravens are having him probably learn several different positions. So give him a chance to get his feet wet so he knows what he's doing out there. But the talent is going to speak for himself. And right off the bat, I expect Kyle Hamilton to play, you know, 70% of the snaps versus the Jets right, right off the bat, you know. Um, so I think that he's going to be used a lot. I think he's going to be very effective in how he's used. But, you know, if he goes through some rookie pains, just, you know, be patient with him. All right, be patient with him. And, um... One highlight from a one-on-one -on -one drill, running backs versus linebackers, uh, Patrick Queen actually um, stopped uh, Justice Hill from getting a, uh, a catch. I think they said Justice Hill went went out and went to the wheel route. Just uh, Patrick Queen was all over it, all right? And that's what we want to hear about Patrick Queen, right? Because Justice Hill is a fast, he's a fast receiving back, man. You know, that's not a slow guy. So Patrick Queen be step for step with him, that's a good sign. Because what is Patrick Queen's biggest weakness? We know he's not great in pass coverage. So if he can clean up the pass coverage and be decent in that, and then he already has the instincts and the speed, if he could put it all together and be able to drop back, read the quarterback's eyes, make a play, Patrick Queen's going to be really good, all right? And now I think the next step of Patrick Queen, honestly, is I would love to see him take over that Mike linebacker role and be able to call some of the stuff out on defense. Um, but if that's not this year, maybe next year we'll see what happens with that. Um, but Patrick Queen is a player that this is a big year for him. Year three is huge, right? Um, but from what I've been hearing about from back in OTAs, he's been better in pass coverage. So now we just need to see that what he's doing in practice transfer to the games. All right. And, um, that's really the training camp report for today. You know what I'm saying? The defense all over the offense. Um, Marcus Williams, big free agent sign that had his best day of the training camp making plays on the football, which is what he was brought here to do. So that's good for the Ravens. The Ravens offense, they got to be sharper. They got to clean up the mistakes, all right? Because it sounds like the miscommunications part is the same reason why the Ravens, you know, get illegal illegal formations every every game or, you know what I'm saying, legal shift, delay a game, you know, stuff like that we just, we just can't have, you know what I mean? So um, hopefully the Ravens can clean it up by the time we see them this preseason game. Uh, John Harbaugh always said Lamar Jackson's not going to play in the preseason. I expect, I expect a lot of guys not to play in the preseason, so that's not really any news there. And, um, you know, we're going to keep coming back with um, the reports and some new videos daily, man. It's your boy Gabriel. Just another fan TV. I'm out.